Okay, so we're live here on Facebook. How's it going, everybody? This is Jose Trujillo. Bless you. Thank you. We're going to be here on Facebook doing a little painting. Hopefully, you guys get to enjoy it. This is oil on a canvas, and it measures 11 by 14 inches. <laughs> All right, let's do this. So I'm going to start out by simply doing a, a, a very simple sketch, okay? Very simple sketch around this. I'm going to paint the eyes. Very simple. Nothing, nothing too complicated as painting in itself is a bit complicated. Uh, so we don't want to make it more than it already is. It, 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 pa painting itself requires all these little levers, right? You gotta be pushing. I got my, I got my family in my studio, so. That's where that sound comes from. My wife and my son are here in the studio. It doesn't have to be complicated, but 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 it can be. It can be pretty complicated if. And so the way that I do it, I I keep it as simple as possible. And and a lot of what I do, I rely on. I rely on on uh, theme and composition. Uh, it's one of my call it little secrets, I guess, of 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 painting. Um, I try to keep a theme, not necessarily a collection of art, as artists others other artists like to do, but I like to keep themes that are that are new and fresh, so that so that there's something new to to see. Um, this is something that I also teach to my. Um, mentees, artists who are looking to be coached by by me, is um, you can't you can't really you can't really tell the same joke twice. You know, if you're a comedian, at some point you have to come up with a new joke or go to a new city, right? And tell and tell the same joke. You you, you can either you only have two options, right? You can either tell a new joke or take the joke somewhere else. For new people to hear it and so it's the same thing when it comes to painting in order to keep it fresh and new you have to come up with new new ways of doing it you always have to come up with new ways of doing it and so that's where it gets it can get it's not but it can get complicated if you don't look to uh to play with it it's 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 really it's really a game of coming up with new stuff that's really what painting is. It's a game of coming up with new, new ideas, new approach, uh, new themes, new ways of laying paint. And so some people have asked me, why, why is it that you have so many, it looks like you have so many painting styles or something, so it looks different. And part of it is because of that, you know. Um, I need it to look different because I, 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 needed to keep, I need to keep it fresh. A new approach. So let's go into this portrait. I'm going to start painting uh, some of the shadows to create some sort of uh, value here. Create some value. And so the very first shadows, uh, as you see here, the way that I drew this is already putting some shadows in place, but not quite yet. But the very first shadows that I can think of are the ones. And indentations, right? And, 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 the, and the face. Where we have sort of a concave, right? It goes in. Another shadow is here on the upper lip. That seems to most of the time have shadow. Why? Because if the light is coming up here, this lip is not getting light. The bottom lip is getting light. 
Another shadow is down here because the head is resting somewhere. So wherever the head is resting, there should be shadow down there. Little things like that. Right? Just very little things. Very little simple things like that. You think of shadow also. Very light. But there's also shadow right underneath these eyes. It has to be. Otherwise, something has got to hold them. Right? Something is holding them. And of course, under the hair. Of course, the nostrils. But even, even more important than the nostrils, um, there's always... We're comp my son and I are competing for noise right now. <laughs> Is this? All right, let me go uh, close the door over here. Uh, all right. I'm not in my home studio. I'm uh, I don't have a home studio anymore. I used to. I'm in my I'm in my regular studio and I, I bring in my family here with me so there's more usually more noise than it used to be. So I'm gonna go into painting the face. Very simple again, right? This is a very simple approach. Nothing complicated about it really. Well, thank you so much, Susan. The idea of, of this type of expressionist uh, painting is to capture the emotion, as well as well as the re uh, slight representation of the character or, or the subject, but but just capture the emotion as as quick and as simple as possible. And the emotion changes depending on on, on the brushstroke. Not just on the features, because uh, the beautiful thing about expressionism is that you capture certain features and certain emotions uh, by not meaning to. You 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 alter the features. You know, you start altering the features, and you don't really need, you don't really mean to. It just kind of happens due due to the expression of the brushstroke. It's a hands down. This is the style that I enjoy the most because of that. Because it, it it it's very uh, it's very honest. It's a very honest style. Um, not nothing against representational realism or anything like that, but, but this is a very honest style for that for that matter. Because every brushstroke carries in itself uh, a little something extra that may alter, and it's okay. May alter the features, and 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 the the ultimately the what what the character is expressing in this case the the, the portrait it may be a, a feeling of you know being alone so you know some, some some sort of pensive right they might be they may be thinking about something in deep thought uh, very little things that occur can alter a few little brush strokes can alter completely the the expression it doesn't need much. See? Super simple. And, and there's a quickness to it 
that doesn't require me to be quick. It doesn't require me to be in a, in a constant motion. and It doesn't require that. There's a quickness to it that happens by itself. And, and uh, due to the simplicity of the painting. And it's not a it's not a one brush stroke style either. There's there's that also that exists. That out, artists out there are doing that, and that's that's fine. That's perfect. That's not what I'm showing here, and that's not what I teach. Uh, this requires multiple brush strokes. It's not one or two. Um, I have been studying the works of a few artists for quite some time, and and especially when it comes to portrait art, I paid a lot of attention to the idea of minimalist with very strong brush strokes uh, from some of the some of the French artists that I admire a lot which are uh, Edouard Manet and Eugène Delacroix the way that they they created the brush stroke it was almost too simple and and it allowed for lots of representation to go in there and so this is one of the reasons why people say you can do so much and such a few brush strokes. Well, the reality is that it's not necessarily just a few brush strokes. It's just less brush strokes than than what a lot of artists out there are, are using. Uh, another artist that I admire so much is Soroya. I'm not comparing myself to those artists, of course. I'm saying I, I grab some of those qualities and I and I try to use them in my own work. Um, the Spanish painter Soroya also uh, did very, uh, just like John Singer Sargent, very very much in, in so little right. very much in so little look you don't need to you don't need to rub the lamp so much for the genie to come out <laughs> it's just a few but very solid brush strokes with a lot of paint lots and lots of paint but part of the trick also is that is that if you if you study the artists who have done any work like this, they use lots of paint, and and I found that um, today artists are, are are a bit afraid of using too much paint because many of them are afraid that they might be com confused with uh, uh, ex you know impasto painters only, or or um, or if you're using too much paint, you might not be um, really. No, you don't really know what you're doing, and on the contrary, there's there's plenty of artists that use too much paint in history. Uh, all it takes is just a after the Corona <laughs> craze, right? Uh, a little visit to the museum and, and see some of the old works by by Rembrandt, Peter Paul Rubens, uh, Delacroix, uh, Goya, any any of those artists, and you'll see how much paint they use. It, their paintings almost look almost look like impasto all of their process has, has a, a lot of paint um, just like a, Monet once said I don't know if I'm a great painter or not like people say but I sure know that I've that I've wasted a lot of paint I use a lot of paint in my in my canvases and it's because the paint is what allows you to sort of sculpt you know not being afraid of using paint you sort of sculpt around the portrait, the image, or whatever you're doing, or in it, right? You're you're sort of finding different little things that that are there, and only paint can do that, in my opinion. Only paint can really do that. Um, it's extremely important to use lots of paint. Anyways, this is my method. This is uh, what I've been teaching artists and. I just wanted to share a little bit here through making this uh, this portrait live right here with you. The simplicity is what allows it to, it gives it breathing room, you know.
something like that. Hope you guys are enjoying this uh, as much as I am. I, it's always, always uh, a pleasure to show up here and and uh, share with you guys what I'm doing, what I'm up to. You can even use your 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 the the, the back of your brush to to create some of those uh, little indentations. You're you're in a way almost almost a sculptor also, but but you're using it all. You know, just not not just one thing. You're using it all. Sometimes you'll see me uh, use the palette knife uh, and the brush all together, and and it's not one thing over another. That's really how I approach it. Not one thing over another. Everything can be used and, and should be used if you if you if you know how to use it. Everything should be available. I'm going to do some, some hard lines here around. And that adds a whole different character also. Let me show you. Thank you so much, Robert. I appreciate that. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Van. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. As you can see, it's a very simple approach. And uh, and I started learning this approach by ob observing live, uh, because because in, in print you can't really see the paintings. You have to be in front of them. Uh, even in video, you can't really see much. But uh, but uh, Robert says reminds me somewhat of Malcolm. Li yeah, Mal yeah, Malcolm uh, Lipke. Yeah, he's 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 amazing. Also, I love the way that he does it too. Um. But I started looking at the paintings of, of uh, what's this character's name? Um, um, Mane, Edward Mane. Uh, and there was such simplicity, I couldn't believe it. When I started looking at his paintings, there was just way too much simplicity. Uh, his, his dead uh, matador, uh, and many of his paintings that I started just like crazy, just studying and, and paying attention to. To even his unfinished work, actually, his unfinished work is the one that, that gives me the most insight because you can actually see how it's laid down. And so, no trickery, no nothing, just simplicity. Uh, I'm not trying to make a portrait out of a few brush strokes. There's, it's not about trickery. It's about finding finding the path of least resistance. That's all. It doesn't it doesn't matter if it needs. Uh, tons of brush strokes or very little brush strokes it, none of it matters what matters is finding that path yeah man ain't no wasted strokes yeah he did not waste strokes absolutely absolutely it was, his brush strokes were so meaningful uh, just as John Singer Sargent but John Singer Sargent was much more uh, leaning towards realism than impressionism even though he wanted to jump in the bandwagon with them um, he was more of a realist painter, just like Soroya. Soroya was a much more a realist than an impressionist, but uh, but but I do love that. I love that simplicity, um, and and his lack of fear for using black. Almost almost no artist, um, in my opinion, has used black. Uh, like like Manet, and I think I think a lot of it has to do also because he studied the, the Spanish painters, uh, Velázquez and Goya, and, and I, I think they call them the the French painter that that painted like a Spaniard. You know, so there it is, my friends. My name is Jose Trujillo. I'm an artist. Uh, thank you so much, Robert. I appreciate that. Uh, Robert says, uh, "Great work, Jose. How often are you doing this?" Uh, well. I'm a full-time artist, so I, I, I do this just pretty much all the time. I'm going to be showing you guys here on Facebook one of these paintings every single day, uh, if, you know, God permits. Every single day, just uh, showing up here and doing, doing one of my small works. Uh, what I am doing is I am putting uh, classes together 
for artists, uh, specific workshops where I where I show you my palette and and everything, how I mix the colors and all of that. And those are going to be workshops, but those are those are separate from this. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll share the link to uh, with anyone who wants to join them. Uh, those are very cool as well because they are much more complete. Uh, I'm using I'm using uh, multiple shots so that you can see when I'm mixing the colors and and when I'm painting. So there it is, my friends. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.